The world of physics is an exciting place. You find all kinds of mysterious creatures in there. From wave particle dualities in the lands of quantum mechanics, to oceans filled with neutrons or electrons, to futuristic cities powered by perovskite solar cells. And then there are the people that live in this wondrous world. We call them scientists, and sometimes we call them nerds. But this world does not belong only to the scientists, it is also there for you. Science is fun and helps you to better understand the technology and natural phenomena that are around you. I'm Lucas, your friendly physicist and your guide through the world of science. Now let's start our journey and visit some of these nerdy scientists. I'm already curious what they are up to. And you should be too. With their research, they are shaping not only the future of the physics world, but also yours. The guest for today's episode is Matthias Zalewski. Matthias studied solid-state physics at the Technical University in Dortmund and also did there his PhD with a focus on optical spectroscopy of semiconductor nanostructures. And besides being a scientist, Matthias is also a great communicator. During his PhD, he joined the Physikanten and after his PhD, he worked for the Physikanten as a full-time job. And there he combines both science and communication and brings physics into the spotlight, onto the center stages of our world in ways you've never seen before. And there is no fire tornado, no imploding oil barrel, and no thermodynamic water column that is too grand or too big for him and the electrifying shows of the Physikant. And what exactly a Physikant is and what he's doing and what the life of a Physikant looks like, he will tell us in the next 45, 50 minutes. So Matthias, I'm very happy that you joined me on this show. Welcome. Great to have you on board. The first question is um, very traditional on this podcast show. It's um, it's a question: Are you are you a nerd? Do you consider yourself being a nerd? No, Lucas, I don't no? consider myself being a nerd. I can share the excitement for nerdy topics, and I have a heart for nerds. But probably this makes me already being not nerdy myself because what you say about nerds, at least as I understand this, is that they are socially not very interested. But uh, but I I'm I'm interested in the the nerdy people, and I I think I can qu quite good with them. I mean, I studied physics, so I spent <laughs> quite some years of my life with them, and uh, yeah, it's never boring. <laughs> But uh, yeah, in the end of the day, I uh, find somehow the, the people topics and the interaction with people slightly more appealing than the, the technical topics themselves. So... That's, that's totally fine. That's, um, I think this is a rare definition of, of nerd. Of what would be yours? Um, I, I mean, I find it... Um... <laughs> A bit surprising that you say you studied physics with nerds, but you don't consider yourself being a nerd. <laughs> Maybe I should ask uh, your uh, your colleagues from your studies if they consider you being a nerd. I, I yeah. think not, not, nothing wrong with uh, not being a nerd. Uh, you're still very welcome to the show. Oh, yeah, thank you. I hope it's not disqualifying me. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. <laughs> not at all. I, I'm pretty sure you have uh, a lot of interesting stuff to tell because you are a physicant. So this is a German word. I don't know if there's an English translation of this. Word. <laughs> Better <clears throat> don't try to. No, no, no. To English, no, I, I heard some some rare ideas from English speak, speaking persons about this pronunciation. But yeah, you're right. It's it's German. It's a mixture of physic physicist, yeah, or physics. Yeah. It's pretty obvious. And the second part is uh, constructed out of the German word musikant. Maybe you heard about. Bremer Stadtmusikanten. So it's, it can be translated by musician, but it's not exactly the same like we also. It, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's rather emphasizing the, the, performan, the performance than rather the skill. So it's a bit more emphasizing the performance than the skill. of. Yeah, I, I, actually, I, I thought a lot about the, the, the term Physikant. 
and I like it that it's not a mixture between uh, or, uh, it's not a mixture of physique and musica. Then probably it would be physica, <laughs> which is a which is. <laughs> but I and there I also like the German language because you have two terms: you have musica, but you also have musikant, and musikant is something different than musica. It, yeah, it's different. It's right? like it's moving around. Uh, yeah a and, bit more folkloristic right yeah, and, and uh, closer to the people and and probably not studied the instrument but just did it mm -hmm. by by life or something like this yeah yeah, yeah. which is which would also be not the definition of a nerd no a nerd would study the instrument and study yeah. the music by heart and yeah, not look, just yeah yeah so oh yeah together. yeah now <laughs> I'm glad we sorted that out. <laughs> Interesting thought, yeah. Um, but tell us a bit more. What what is a physicant and what what is he, what is a physicant yeah. doing? Yeah, you, you know, a physicant uh, can be absolutely. Um, so it does not have to be uh, have to play an instrument or so. So uh, a mu a physicant brings physics experiments on stage. It is the the showmaster of science. So That's a great we, title. we we bring these uh, experiments to to rare rare places. They typically you find them in the laboratory or in the classroom. Mm -hmm. But uh, we bring them in the spotlight. And I really speak about spotlight, like a big stage with nice illumination, sound effects, and and an audience, the audience is for me the most important aspect of a theater and a stage situation. And then present it in an exciting way that thrills the people and uh, yeah, brings a lot of, of fun and excitement. Sounds amazing. So also very professional. I mean, you have a stage, you have a spotlight, you have illumination, sound. Um, yeah. Uh, how... I mean, I can hear your excitement about this in your voice. <laughs> uh, how, how did you become a physicant? Oh, yeah, that was uh, a question of a couple of hours. I <clears throat> So you have to know, I studied in Dortmund, Technische <laughs> Universität Dortmund. And uh, the founder of Physikanten also is a graduate from this university. So there was already always a link between the company Physikanten and the university. And one day... I passed the, the notice board, the Schwarze mm -hmm. Brett from the university, the notice board, and I saw they are looking for some little helpers in the logistics, some some easy tasks. And I, I knew Physikanten before, they performed at our university, then, and I saw this uh, advertisement and I was like, I became in, tr in trance, I <laughs> could not control myself anymore. And with that, without, within a few hours, I sent my application, but completely ignoring the job description. It was <laughs> clear for me that I don't want to, uh, to work in the logistics. I want to, yeah, to do the, the, uh, the, the job Physikanten are famous for. You, you, want, and... you wanted the spotlight. <clears throat> Yeah, I you think I already wanted, wanted, wanted. Spotlight. Still, there there were some some steps to take mm -hmm. until uh, reaching uh, the stage, um, but I wanted the interaction with people and mm -hmm. uh, more right. more with the with the stuff, uh, as a, with the um, equipment. I mean, <clears throat> but although I was not looking for a job, I sent this application. Yeah, as, as I said, within a few hours, and uh, yeah, they probably also felt my excitement, and I got invited and hired pretty soon. But as a part-time job, no, next to mm -hmm. my studies. And how long did you? What What was your job then? After? Oh, my first job was immediately a very exciting one. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was my, one of the highlights because, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I was. Uh, uh, the first job was a Forscherwerkstatt. That is a, a workshop you do with uh, with uh, visitors from an event like Day of Open Door. Mm -hmm. And it was the event was uh, Tag der offenen Tür im Kanzleramt in the office of the in, in Bundeschancellor Merkel in Berlin. Yes, oh, nice. in in the garden uh, of the uh, Kanzleramt, uh, we we brought our stuff and uh, yeah built a, a, a pavil pavilion mm -hmm. and a tent uh, and making some little experiments with the visitors. Mainly children, of course, are mm -hmm. attracted by this, but not only. 
Um, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, they 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 came to our tent, and uh, I think we built a little electric engine from a battery, a magnet, a screw, and a wire. Extremely simple stuff, and you bring it to, together in the right yeah, form, yeah. and then the screw uh, starts to turn, and uh, yeah, and you see the excitement in the people's face because they they know all this equipment, mm -hmm. but they didn't know that together they can make something like this. And the sun was shining and all these Berlin people were around. And, okay, <laughs> the, the <laughs> Chancellor Mer Mer Merkel, she didn't visit our tent, but she was nevertheless passing nearby and it was extremely exciting. And I got a, 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 a pass for the Chancellor office <clears throat> to, uh, yeah, we had to build up before the visitors entered. So mm -hmm. I, I saw it in a in a way you a, a typical tourist doesn't oh, see the Chancellor. Cool. It was extremely exciting. Yeah. That's cool. And it's also, it, it's funny because, um, I mean, this is a f physics podcast, but still, we I think this is the third episode now that where we talk about the Chancellor, Angela yeah, yeah. Mer Merkel. I mean, for the background for our listeners, Angela Merkel is uh, a physicist. <laughs> she She's PhD in physics, I think. Yeah. Uh, to close the loop, I, I think it was episode four or five, uh, where I talked with Melanie Closel and Leonard Rieb about uh, experiments in microgravity. And mm -hmm. one possibility to do microgravity experiments is to go on a parabolic flight, and the typic and the plane which is doing this was the former plane of the Chancellor Angela Merkel. <laughs> that that was basically her plane, and now this plane <laughs> is in Bordeaux, and you can go there and use it as a research lab that basically falls from the sky, and you have microgravity conditions. <laughs> Wow, that's that's interesting. I didn't know that, but I I, I doubt that she herself <laughs> used the plane in this in this way. Yeah? <laughs> but Pro probably not. But she... but maybe she's still dreaming about it. <laughs> maybe, maybe at one point. We yeah, see maybe she's board. suffering for having chosen the wrong job. Finally, I don't know. Because oh, it's really she... fun. I don't being working as a physicist as as well. <laughs> I I consider it is is one of the best jobs in the world. I mean, I didn't have too many other jobs yet, but uh, I don't feel it. <laughs> the need to change anything uh, uh, probably she also doesn't feel the need to change anything i could, could imagine mm. she's pretty happy i know which, which is and to 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 further and uh, enlarge this loop i mean we both met in the building which was next to the yeah to the to the apartment of angela Merkel in berlin yeah in the magnus house the, in the magnus headquarters house. of the Phys german physicist society in berlin that's true exactly <laughs> so angela Merkel being the Patron of this oh, podcast, yeah. Lisa. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Yes, yes, kind of. We were felt always proud about uh, having a physicist as as mm -hmm. our chancellor, and it was a, mm -hmm. also a self understanding for being a physicist. People always ask, "What can you, will you work later?" And the answer was always, "Well, we can become a Bundeskanzler." Mm -hmm. The typical answer the people said to me was, "Well, you can." become a taxi driver <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a big range <laughs> it definitely is a big range I, I certainly will link her um to to this podcast episode maybe she listens to it so if she listens to it um yes yeah. we, we say hi we best say regards hi. yes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now we, we we know what a physicant is doing we know how how you became a physicant um maybe you can take us to a short uh, behind the scene look. So what is, how, how does, uh, after you, you did this workshop and you, you reached the spotlight and you reached, um, the, the, let's say the position where you actually could do the experiments for an audience on stage in the spotlight. How, how was yeah. it made? Yeah, I mean, I, I, in the beginning, as I said, I was rather do, organizing workshops and performing them, but the usual case was also that together with the workshop, workshop team, um, a uh, show team uh, drove mm -hmm. to the event and then uh, yes during the show of course all people are in the audience and the work workshop team had some free time and i was standing all always next to the stage and watching the show and was excited and and one day i i think yes it was a job together with with a boss from physikanten and i later uh, when we had a beer i was brave enough to say hey i also want to stand with you up there and uh, yeah, and then uh, the snowball began to roll, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I was invited to a casting, and uh, so and... it was really like an audition, then. So you really yes. had to apply, and 
Yes, 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 yes. Um, I mean, I was, <clears throat> I what? How did I, I? Yes, I prepared it a little bit myself. I, I, I once already borrowed some experiments uh -huh. and did a little bit of show on myself for for the dancing club I was in during that okay. time. So Marcus supported that, and uh, th this was not an official job. Yeah. But I, Marcus, I just Marcus, is the, Marcus is the head of the Physik yeah. Kanton. Good yeah. that you mentioned that, Marcus Weber. Yeah, and um, but I could already practice <laughs> and uh, <laughs> during during this event for my club, and uh, of course I also took a uh, video record and uh, yeah uh, attached it to my application. Mm -hmm. So this right. was for sure uh, helpful but still i went through the casting and this is until nowadays uh, the usual procedure when you mm -hmm. want to become an actor um and uh yeah and then i think in 2016 like four years after joining having joined physical and i uh, was accepted as a as an actor and i start playing shows and how does it look behind the scenes was your yeah i mean how does a show look like i, I, I mean yeah, it's completely different from what it looks like behind the scenes. I would say, <laughs> behind the scenes, it's sweat and tears, of course, because we <laughs> we have a, tears. Yeah, yeah, no, a lot of sweat as well. We have so much <laughs> stuff typically to carry, so we uh, go to the event location with a little truck. Yeah, somewhat a, a, a truck that you can still drive with a usual driver's license. So, uh -huh. uh, in in. 95% of the cases. Uh, so we pick it up in the morning or the day before. Then we have a six hours ride to the last corner of Germany or even abroad. And uh, then typically three hours before the show, we enter the, the location and build up, up our stuff. Unloading and uh, building up, we are supported by some helpers on the local side. Mm -hmm. And if I say we, the typical Physikanten team consists of two actors and one technician. So mm -hmm. three people that will uh, run the show. The actors on stage, obviously, and the technician behind the, uh, how to call it, so, so backstage taking care for light and sound. And then light goes on curtain opens and then you see yeah. the stage with exactly. a lab and it's already smelling and yeah burning. what while you do i would not say that you see a lab classical it is uh, it, it is thus it is not nerdy <laughs> you see we have all our experiments uh on on some uh, little stage wagons so they are movable they are painted in they are red or uh and um it's very tidy, the stage, I would say. Also, everything is structurized. And, and when, uh, yeah, the curtains open, the curtain opens, music is playing, like a driving music. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's not this one, but uh, to give you an impression. And then, then you enter the stage, you widen your arms, you say, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome to the most exciting physics experience you can think of. Welcome to the great Physikanten show. Then you expect some, uh, so you already at this point expect, of course, some applause in, uh, <laughs> in response. If it's not happening, which is very rare, but uh, sometimes you have a, a, a show in front of, um, uh, in the school where uh, uh, young people going through pubertate and uh, difficult age and then uh, if they still need uh, an extra push you might repeat this so so really wake them up you okay. do not start be before you are sure you have the attention that uh, the theater deserves yeah? you interact with the audience all the time it's not like yeah. a, a, a screenplay where <clears throat> the the actors are decoupled mm -hmm. somehow doing their stuff no the the audience is is one of the performing it's entities. part of the show absolutely absolutely we are dressing people there and it's 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 uh, it's always like like this but 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 still uh, i mentioned two uh, actors and they are having their roles the one is the entertainer per let's say definition he's a he's um, dressed like mm -hmm. an entertainer in a colorful suit mm -hmm. or shirt or something like a showmaster yeah. like a showmaster but of course 
as the stereotype might be, the showmaster is not the smartest <laughs> guy in the hall. <laughs> At least in our case, it is like this. Uh, and uh, next to the showmaster, after having warmed up this, the, the audience, uh, the professor will enter the stage. And here mm -hmm. you, you get your nerd, finally. <laughs> ah. So you played yeah. the showmaster or the professor? No, I played the professor <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and the pro professor is, is doing the experiments? Uh, no, the professor, you know, he's, uh, he's so so high so advanced of course he mm -hmm. tries to avoid doing anything with his hands but he gives the commands like and in the, real life the, like, <laughs> <laughs> don't know where it took this from but yeah oh, i know so <laughs> you want to become a professor yourself you told me oh, yeah. once so <laughs> must be a reason yeah. for it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, so he usually um uh, ask the uh, entertainer to to make his hands or her hands dirty and then he himself or she it can be a, a woman as well uh, will explain then later on the physics behind mm -hmm. yeah okay and I, I mean let's talk about these experiments what experiments okay. you have on stage what is your favorite experience or let's uh, what what kind of experiments you have i mean probably you don't have a particle accelerator on stage uh, or, would, or uh, would be huge i mean this is the the this is like a yeah the philosophy is scale it up so mm -hmm. make it as as big as you can of course i mean we sometimes we work with a camera and a, and a projection but it's not the 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 idea the idea is to make it accessible for the whole hall what's going on there in the front so therefore Think yeah. big. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and, and and in the in the show, it 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 can be something really big. The giant vortex rings made of a, a stage uh, fog, such mm -hmm. a, a steam mm -hmm. uh, used for for stage, and we fill up a huge. How to describe it? A ring, or it's a, it's a cavity, maybe a. Uh, of a di diameter, think about a circle of, uh, of two meter diameter and uh, in diameter, and uh, it's filled with this fog, and it has an opening, circled opening in the front, and then you uh, hit on the back of this of this drum, and giant vortex ring uh, uh, appears and propagates through the hall. and you put a spotlight on it, and mm -hmm. it's uh, very stable. Uh, yeah, flying over the head of the, over the heads of the people, and they are rising their hands trying to touch it, and it's it's a very amazing moment, and one for sure one of the very big experiments that, that can that can easily engage in mm -hmm. a big hall, yeah, okay. with with enthusiasm. Another example I want to mention is the fire tornado, also mm -hmm. around two two and a half meters high. Uh, metallic cage that spins uh, around a, a little uh, fire burning on a, in, on, a, on a plate on the ground yeah and the whole construction is rotating with the cage mm -hmm. around it and mm -hmm. this uh, flame that is typically on the ground will rise up and form a tornado a wow. fire tornado Amazing. it can become very high and this is also like a mouth opening moment for yeah, us. I, I'm sitting in front of the microphone having my <laughs> mouth open just <laughs> listening to you and here I want to a short disclaimer here I want to refer to my Instagram channel because this is a podcast here you only have the audio, the, the audio but on Instagram you have also the video so I will link like the trailer of the Physikanten and uh, also some some real footage of the shows so you can I don't know if I find online the fire tornado, but let, let's see. Maybe I can put it there. Then you have uh, also the, the video to it, and you can have better impression how to, how, how these experiments look like. Yes, please do that. But if I might, might add, uh, these are the, the big experiments, but your question was, which one do I like in particular, right? Yeah, yeah just, and it, 
just continue I, to tell it. I, I, I like the, the, the show needs certain elements. It needs, needs this bombastic moments, mm -hmm. but it also needs this interactive moments. Huh? And, and, um, and there, even something very, very small can be very, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So, y you know, if, if I like an actor, And also, yeah, like a worker, I have to be pragmatic because you can imagine building big stuff is much more hard than just <laughs> taking a glass of water out of out of the box and you are done with setup. So this is the pr pragmatic aspect. But still, the story around this hydrostatic water mm -hmm. column I'm referring to here, it's, it's, it's an easy experiment. Just put a beer decal. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how a beer made on, yeah. on, uh, on top of a glass with <clears throat> yeah, water and then you turn around the glass with the beer made so the, the beer decal is below and then you can release your hand but the beer uh, decal will stuck below the glass and hold the water inside the glass mm -hmm. uh, the usual fun stuff everyone can can do at home but uh Yeah, but it's a party can... trick. But if you if you if you have it on stage in this setup, it's... yeah, yeah, and the setup there is in particular funny because uh, we we don't do it ourselves, but we get an, a, a person from the audience on stage, and to do uh, it. yes, and this person is typically shocked. Okay, the listeners of the podcast won't be, but uh, <laughs> usually people are shocked that they should do something be 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 them themselves, and uh, then you the story still continues and it, it's it's extreme fun and with a little uh, with very little effort i think this is always something that should um level it, itself because some some experiments and this is also when i look to other props from from other people they might be extremely fancy and advanced wow and they put so much construction work in it mm -hmm. and then they stand there maybe sorry but sometimes in a nerdy way they themselves feel the, and, 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 uh, the mm -hmm. enthusiasm for, for mm -hmm. what they mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the audience just sees a big construction where it doesn't understand mm -hmm. what it is and uh, it, 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 there, the yeah. level between effort and storytelling and show yeah. is not given yeah. 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 and uh, but the opposite way it works you can be have the greatest story about the simplest mm -hmm. piece of something mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, still the the, sh the the show will be very very strong yeah i i love this approach so much i realized throughout my phd and then later on the postdoc I, for me i think storytelling is everything and everything else is just details yeah if you give a presentation which is basically the same you do on stage Or probably for a, for a smaller audience, or for a for a more expert audience, uh, and with with less uh, experiments. But you also have to tell a story and make it as simple as possible, or as complicated as needed, to get your message across. And there's only one or two messages per talk, or and uh, then you have to tell a story around this message to yeah. also to engage with your audience. I, I like it so much how you. Passing along the enthusiasm for science, but I mean, you, you're not going on stage and just do experiment after experiment after experiment. I mean, there is a story behind. Probably in the majority of cases, we play the best of show, which is just a colorful mixture of experiments as we like them. But you're right. I, I was mm -hmm. also putting uh, these experiments in a in a reasonable order so that mm -hmm. you can link them always. Of course, it's not just okay, this one is done, let's do the next one. Mm -hmm. it, it, they should somehow connect. Mm -hmm. But, um, okay, this is the example of, of best of show. There are also well-defined topics. Uh, this could be the climate show. It could be the astro show mm -hmm. to, to the anniversary of the moon landing, for example. We, mm -hmm. we, we, we made a, a show. It could be yeah something de devoted to a certain topic of a certain discipline of physics like the optics show mm -hmm. uh, okay. the water show S some topics like that uh, we yeah it's also fun is to to develop something new uh, uh, when the uh, when your customer uh, has a s special request this can be related take an industry company 
or that or a company that has its product mm -hmm. and they they give you your product and uh, they say hey tell us some stories around this product and you the the basics of physics you find in every engineering work right so yeah, there's true. always a hook and then you you just tell a story around the physics the principles behind uh, this so with, cust with customers, you mean there are certain companies uh, or, or industry clients, or whatever, and they come to you and say, hey, we have here a very nice product. Can yeah. you advertise the product in the framework of a physical yeah. show? Yeah. And this then you go to, case. to the company for a company party uh, where yeah. all the shareholders or the yeah. worker employees uh, and stuff are there and maybe open door or something and also guests yes and then you do a show yes around this product Ar around this product yeah okay. with with uh maybe so even some product placement in 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 in, in inside so that if it, if possible include the product or at mm -hmm. least uh, maybe the logo or some let it mm -hmm. appear mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. magic physical chemical way <laughs> uh yeah, th this these are examples for for tailor tailored mm -hmm. shows on mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. customer needs. So there are really a lot of different formats, probably also customized them to the. I mean, you have different audiences. I mean, if you yeah. uh, show in, in in a school, it might be different to a show in a, for 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 an industry partner or something. Yeah, just no the life the age of the the audience yeah. is of course an, a, a thing there then it's a, a big difference for the actors and uh, whether it's outdoor or indoor mm -hmm. uh, also for not only for the actors but also for the physicists because uh, you need to think that you cannot uh, do every experiments uh, under unsecure outdoor conditions <laughs> yeah. this is a this is an important point to speak about of course uh, because what do many people think about when they think about physics experiments they fail <laughs> this is this is or at least uh, at least this is my experiments experience that uh, this is a, t a take uh, away message from school for example that uh, experiments have a, a pretty uh, <laughs> yeah not so low uh, probability to fail and um this is of course part of the reality but during the show you want to avoid this as 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 good as you can mm -hmm. so they should really work and they shouldn't be a classical experiment mm -hmm. <laughs> they should, yeah. should work and this is of course a, a lot of engineering uh, activity for really making a stage experiment as yeah. stable yeah. as possible yeah. still you there will come the moment when it's when something goes wrong but uh try to minimize this as as as, as much as you can and this is also the work that that happens behind the behind the scenes when you construct so a lot of engine, engine engineering works a lot of technicians that put a lot of uh, effort you know, in you know, it's, it's, it's a small team but um good awareness of details mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. be, uh, work very accurate there and what are you doing when an experiment fails? You, rep uh, you, you know, I'm I'm not an actor. Yeah, finally, I'm I'm still kind of authentic person on stage because <laughs> I am a physicist. Yeah, physicist. Yeah. Uh, so I I try to be honest to and and, and maybe even show that. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> uh, but uh, I uh, to give okay, an there, authentic look into the version of a real physics. I'm yeah, happy. there, there, I'm maybe nerdy and authentic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's it's. I mean, it's so nice that you mention it because when I tell about my work to my to my friends my, or my family, which are non-academics, non-physicists, uh, and they say, "Yeah, and you do this experiment, and then you know that this is like this and this." So, yeah. After uh, repeating the experiment probably six times until it finally. Yeah. worked out in the end i mean 85 90 percent of the experiments still fail uh, yeah. and there's a lot of of planning and re repetitions and reiterations and feedback and re-coordination until you finally have a working experiment and a working framework for the experiment and then you so know there, stuff. 
there is is one more professional approach than just being authentic <laughs> and this is having a backup solution mm -hmm. this this we also have we backup always experiment. have experiment yes like one two backup experiments are prepared on stage mm -hmm. and if you sometimes you you recognize that something will go wrong before you started with the experiment uh, take an easy example we have the imploding oil barrel Mm -hmm. And this barrel is filled with water steam. But to make steam, you need to uh, fire up the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the the oven, the gas, gas oven below it. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes I, I had such moments, of course, awful. But uh, you, you are and this you need to do like 15 minutes before the experiment. Mm -hmm. And then you recognize five minutes before the experiment. Oh, I forgot to, <laughs> to, to put the fire on and then I look at my actor, at my at my colleague, and we both understand it. And you recognize this five minutes before the uh, experiment, and then you look at your your colleague, uh, and you understand each other without words. And then you take the decision: okay, we will not start this experiment. And <laughs> then we just use our our backup, or mm -hmm. and uh, so when you do this for for a while you you are good in anticipating the outcome and, and mm -hmm. you might see in advance whether something will fail and then mm -hmm. for the audience it will be hidden completely they will mm -hmm. not recognize mm -hmm. and th this is the yeah professional uh way of uh, of handling such uh mistakes can you i mean i'm i'm, I'm sure you can but I, I mean, this is still a science podcast can you explain the physics behind the imploding oil barrel <laughs> yes, <laughs> this I can, and I do not even need to look in the script into the script because I am a physicist. So, the <laughs> b barrel is filled with with vapor, with hot vaporized water, <laughs> completely. And then, uh, what we do in this experiment, we close the barrel, the lid on the top, and uh, so now the system is closed only with this vapor inside and then we take some some uh, uh, water cans and cool pour it from the outside of on the barrel so we are cooling down this this barrel and what will happen um yeah okay we start with the with the effect yeah so we first do the experiment and then the explanation so the audience imagine we do that we are doing this we have a fancy music and then uh yeah we behaving like something will happen and it's big and scary uh and then in fact it will implode with a huge bang mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's a very shocking moment everyone <laughs> wakes up and uh okay and then the the reason for this is when you cool down the vapor it becomes liquid again it becomes water mm -hmm. but uh a liquid requires much less volume than a gas, mm -hmm. and uh, therefore we create an yeah an under pressure or something one could call vacuum inside the barrel. But this means uh, the pressure in our room on our stage uh, is uh, much bigger than what is inside the barrel, and and it's in fact so impressive this gradient, this difference that the outside air will push the barrel. Mm -hmm together and this will happen with a within a moment and the loud bang and uh, okay. that's the physics behind it and that's physics so yeah nice <laughs> it's cool how much how many shows you 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 played uh i think if i count my own shows i'm 50 60 or so mm -hmm. yeah but pu purely stage shows if 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 adding with this workshop experience probably it's don't know twice more mm -hmm. you can book the physica for your school or your yeah this or is, your uh, university yeah sure schools universities are very nice places to to play for uh and then museums or science centers mm -hmm. and then as mentioned before companies that need to celebrate something or yeah, and and these are usual scenarios. Sometimes also theaters put put us in their program. It's also happening. But the, then every, everyone can look up the schedule of your theater, and, and there might be a yeah, yeah. But... On the homepage, there are also public events at least listed where mm -hmm. people can enter. And the, it's 
very often so that in your areas you will find an event and and often it is even uh, entrance free because you have a sponsor mm -hmm. behind it like a company no? and then they okay. will not ask us their visitors for money but uh, they just want to mm -hmm. to give something to the people so the audience is uh, very often did not pay entrance mm -hmm. <laughs> for it uh, it's all right a little uh, and uh, the physicant that said they they are looking for for people to work on their shows, so they're in the... oh, oh. always. You know my my personal situation is now I uh, after graduating from PhD I uh, physicant became my my full time job, mm -hmm. uh, and I did this for a couple of years. But then uh, yeah during the Corona crisis <laughs> you can imagine mm -hmm. it had a slight impact on on our work. <laughs> Slide. It's a very slight. So it's like one day on the other, everything was stopped, and um, so my my full time profession nowadays is something else, and I'm rather physicant as a freelancer at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm. <laughs> do I do I have a more nerdy profession now? I'm thinking, I'm a project leader in an industry company. And, you consider uh, this more nerdy than being a physicant? <laughs> at least it's a little bit more more, more average nerdy. for for mm -hmm. physics graduates. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you still play shows from time to time. Uh, yes, from time to time I do. Not so very much in the in the in the recent past. But uh, one exciting was recently I moved to the Netherlands, mm -hmm. so I'm living in near Arnhem. Uh, since three three years already and uh this summer i uh, had the chance to do the show the first time in dutch mm -hmm. <laughs> so i was taking classes at uh yeah the university of nijmegen which is the next mm -hmm. big city to arnhem uh they it became 100 years and they made nice celebrations and they asked me to to make a show and yes we i did it in, in in dutch and this was a great experience it was a lot of fun and of course i started dreaming yeah. of how to repeat this <laughs> was it the first show of physikanten in the netherlands uh at least at least on a for a dutch uh, audience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yes i think it's Kind of surprising. The Netherlands are so good. You know, Physikanten are located in the west of Germany, near, near Dortmund. Witten mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. the headquarters. This is 100 kilometers from the Dutch border. So mm -hmm. you could think, wow, it's easy. <laughs> but uh, uh, we have been very few times to the Netherlands. And if it was rather that a German customer, well, I don't know, visited a trade fair in Amsterdam and then uh, uh, he asked us to... To, mm -hmm. to to perform there, but, but the the Dutch market is is is, is still free. <laughs> so, so the um, I mean the uh, region of of, yeah, of of interest for the physicant is rather like the Germany Austria it's like the German speaking. Yes, German area. Switzerland Austria is pretty common. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, and the other countries not still I, I there there are from time to time there are exotic uh, e events uh, like i don't know barcelona tokyo oh, really? i personally i personally was to um siberia once that was for me the most exciting job <laughs> and uh, yeah uk so in, in in the united kingdom by the way uh, 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 what we are doing demos props showing props on uh, on stage is uh, this way of science communication is more popular than than here in mm -hmm. continental europe mm -hmm. the uk is pretty advanced so there is a community over there and they are also having conferences and we used to participate in in them and uh, shared knowledge so conferences yeah. in, in for science communication yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, the big network, it's called. Big. Forgot what it, what it stands for, but um, maybe we can put it in the in the show notes. In the show notes. Somebody's interested. 
yeah it's it slowly it's, it's also coming to germany so there are um, at least i'm aware of, of one or two um psychom conferences that are purely on on science communication mm -hmm. and uh, i think by now the dpg spring conference so the so the biggest physics conference in germany they also have uh, some sessions on psychom mm -hmm. by now but this is also i think might be wrong here but very recently since two or three years or something like this mm -hmm. but it's cool that it's slowly people are aware hey it's it's work to do science communication and uh, i mean in, in times where you are over flood with fake news and and stuff uh, i think it's a, it's a good thing to have something more solid like science where you can you have facts and you can you have critical thinking and you yeah have the view be aware of of your surroundings and how how this interacts with your environment and with yourself and other people so i think it's a very important aspect which is also one of the reasons i'm doing this podcast mm. to bring science, science yeah. to, to to the people and uh, you're oh. a perfect guest because you're <laughs> a science communicator on a podcast for science communication it's it's no coincidence that we uh started speaking with each other i remember your pitch during this uh, conference in in Uh, mm -hmm. Berlin where we met and uh, you mentioned this podcast and I was of course immediately triggered like look yeah. <laughs> no, uh, science and communicator I, and I was I was triggered by your Get pitch connected. because I, I, I still remember you were sitting in the first row and when it was uh, you who, who was to introduce you immediately took the stage <laughs> and said hello <laughs> I'm Matthias and I'm doing this and this and that and that and this was like hey this is a cool guy Yeah. He's, he knows how to engage with people, make people excited about about yourself, but also about the topics you you're interested in. Yes. Stages want to be entered, so mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> go, true. go true. to the front. <laughs> what is what is the future now of Physikanten? Physikanten is uh, yeah doing these shows. And I hope for many, many more years. Uh, what we are also doing is we uh, support television productions. Mm -hmm. Proud being a partner for many years from the Sendung mit der Maus. Mm -hmm. uh, partner sounds so. We are not part of the of the team, but there is always from time to time requests. Uh, so I myself was a child, grew up with the mouse, and. Uh, I, I, their approach is no, children can ask questions and they will answer them and then when I once worked at Physikanten the magic moment happened, the phone rang and the mouse was on the phone and it forwarded a children question to me <laughs> it, was, it was a really thrilling moment I don't <laughs> dream <on>. come true <laughs> yeah nice. and then then I started dealing with this, with this question uh, and uh, Yeah, and it's it's nice. Of course, they want to to make an uh, an experiment then out of it, and uh, so we were, were supporting stuff like this. Uh, in the past years, Physikanten became quite popular due to uh, the television uh, show with uh, Kai Pflaume, Wer weiß mm -hmm. denn sowas, XXL, which is a Saturday evening program. Mm -hmm. For for international listeners, but Saturday evening is a holy time of the week, <laughs> at least in in the, when when I grew up for the other generations. Not because you go to discotheque. No, at twenty fifteen, uh, the big shows start. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's Wenden really a wet dance with yeah. Thomas Gottschalk, <laughs> yeah. and it's a b big honor to. And and there, uh, yeah, physical are. Uh, regular part of the of the show so it's a quiz show and there are questions related to physics and to answer them just do the experiment and then everyone is persuaded that the answer is correct so, so, you, so, so you go to the show and perform the experiment sometimes uh, the, <clears throat> yeah yeah Markus also we mentioned him the founder of Physikanten he is uh, really showing his face and he's known mm -hmm. as the physics expert and uh, so he he, he yeah He's part of this show, so so these are other activities for physical. What's next for you? Still continuing uh, as a freelancer for physical? More right. shows in Netherlands? 
yeah, this is uh, in fact a weak point for me. So I weak in, in terms of uh, I'm I I like this idea. Yes, <laughs> I would yeah, would yeah, like to awesome. maybe maybe develop here to the Benelux, and uh, yeah, this is this could become my project. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now that you're speaking <laughs> Dutch and uh, yeah, already <laughs> integrated into the science communication. In the uh, Netherlands, you're the perfect candidate for bringing physical shows to Netherlands, Benelux. Yeah, you didn't ask me one question I prepared for. Do you remember? Oh. <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, the officially last question is uh, what else do you want to add? To no, <laughs> ah, okay, yes, then I want to complain. <laughs> Just skip this question. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, which question I skip? Uh, can you do the experiments at home? Can you do the experiments at home? Uh, yes, this is, good that this you're true. asking, Lukas. Yeah. That's you know, I, I thought... I, I wanted cannot... to ask this question all the time. <laughs> we Since... cannot speak about Physik Kanten without having done at least one easy experiment for home. So I brought with me a cup. It's still empty, mm -hmm. but I have hot milk in my thermos uh, can. And uh, in the cup, yeah, it's not completely empty. There's cacao powder inside. So, I, so you know, audio, audio comment from the off. Yeah, is, um, is filling milk into a cup. Yes. With okay. cacao Hot powder. Milk. Yes, and now I need need to stir it in order to mix it nicely. And now let's make some music. I will steer it one more time. Steer it. I don't want to ask this question, but do you have a back up experience? <laughs> <laughs> this one was good. And uh, my hands are shaking because I don't. So just give it another try. So mix it nicely. And you did not hear anything, huh? No. <laughs> then just cheers <laughs> what are we supposed to hear we are supposed to hear the physics of cacao the hot chocolate effect one more time wow, my whole desk is already full of cacao pulver because I'm staring like 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 sick here I, don't, I mix it again and let's It's maybe, it's microphone. Microphone. <laughs> maybe it's a microphone. I don't know. No, it's not the microphone. Oh, my, my, uh, no. <laughs> I should see my desk now. <laughs> Everything is dirty. This is a very authentic way of promoting science. I mean, <laughs> as, as I said, uh, most of the experiments <laughs> fail. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I could now pretend it's not a stage here. Uh, <laughs> but but as, a, as a physicist and as a show professor, Explain the uh, physics behind it. <laughs> that the physics is it didn't it didn't work. At, at least I didn't hear anything. Did you hear? I just heard click 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 click. Mm -hmm. But be, next to the beat, you should also hear a scale, a melody. Like really, but but, but there was nothing like this, huh? I mean, I have I have these uh, things on my on my head. One more time. Oh, it's stable. Stable tone. Yeah. It's just, yeah. No backup, but. Yeah, I mean, pretty limited, of course, here just to the to the sound. Uh, as I could uh, impress you with an optical illusion, but uh, <laughs> it might not work for all the listeners. You still impressed me. You brought an experiment to the show. Next yeah, I will. For, I will. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I impressed myself uh, on how my notebook and everything's looking like. I will take <laughs> a picture for you because it's it was a complete mess. And uh, yeah, yeah, I don't I don't want to explain something that didn't work because I I cannot explain why it didn't work. So let's let's just skip this part. Or, or I mean, you have the finger on your. Uh, Maybe we, I mean, just, it's not live, right? 
<laughs> it's not live now. So we could repeat it in principle, yeah? We could repeat it. We could just cut it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> until it's working. I, I think it's too funny to cut it out, but... Uh... Yeah, that's... <laughs> I don't want to embarrass you, but it's, it's, but it's not, it's not embarrassing. Yeah, for you it's funny, but <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> no, we are, we are doing so much promotion for science, and now science fails us. Yeah, this is what the final point. Yeah. Mm. Not, not what I wanted, but hey, that's life. Yeah, it's a bitter chocolate. It's even without sugar, so I, I wanted to drink it all the time, but now it's a pretty bitter lesson. Yeah. <laughs> okay, should we end uh, with a bitter lesson or do we have we should end on a high note? What's if your what's, idea? Uh, what's your most memorable experience of physical shows? Yeah, um, failures like like this. I also once failed with a T rocket, but it was not on a on a physical show, it was in a group of people. Maybe it's that I'm I'm missing the stage. It, because I, the stage I, is I, not I, big enough. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, how much the desk? My desk is 120 by 60, and this is really limited now. But I'm my most memorable. Yeah, I think. Yeah, when doing it in another language, like uh, mm -hmm. in, in Siberia, in, in Russian, this was really. <laughs> you was you did the show in, in Russian. I did it in Russian. Yes. <laughs> during during studies, I uh, I've been in Saint Petersburg. And uh, and then I learned the language, and then I, I started dreaming doing it in in Russian, and this was, and the dream was, comes true, and it became true. Uh, oh, I see. This was this was cool. <laughs> what is welcome to the Fusikant show in Russian? Oh, how you uh, <laughs> open in Russian? Dobro пожаловать, дамы и господа, на наше великолепное выступление физикантов. Amazing. <laughs> uh, something like this. <laughs> it's. Uh, I mean, we already talked about how, how much I like the Russian language and you obviously as well. But it sounds so much more epic if you do it in Russian. It's so much more. It, it, gives, it gives more value, more more strength to it. So yeah. <laughs> this is a high note. Cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the picture of my desk will also be, I promise. But uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, if you allow, I will also put this on my Instagram channel <laughs> to see the real life of a physical. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much, Matthias, for being yeah, Luca. on this show <laughs> and for bringing us the stories of what a physical is and what a physical is doing. Um, <laughs> how much blood and tears and sweat and yeah, cacao yeah, yeah. powder yeah. puts into <laughs> the experiments. Yeah, I was honest about that, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Cool. Okay, Thanks Lucas. a lot. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, hopefully see you soon on uh, on some stage in the Netherlands or in Germany or somewhere else. I will be excited. At one point, I will, I will, I will join. One oh, yeah. Course. Great. Let me know. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thanks. Take Bye. care <laughs> and um, see you soon. That's it for today. If you have questions, feedback, input, or some wishes for new topics on this show, let me know in the Spotify comment section below or simply reach out to me on Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn. And as usual, one final remark. The best thing about this podcast is that it is about you and your story and everyone can participate. So if you want to share an exciting story about your science, your academic life, some crazy experiments, or any other nerdy stuff, feel free to drop a short message. Thanks for tuning in, take care and see you soon on the next episode of Your Friendly Physicist and Other Nerds.